So one big problem that photographers come to me for help with all the time is with Lightroom, specifically calling and rating lots of landscape images very quickly. And they try to get into a flow of importing images, sorting through them, and then quickly identifying which ones they want to process right away and which ones they want to set aside for later. But what often happens is that they get stuck hemming and hawing over, is this a one star or two star image? Should I keep this one? and they get frustrated and give up and they end up having this big disorganized library of images. So I'm here to tell you that I see this all the time. It's a huge challenge for many photographers because they've actually overcomplicated the process. They're just overthinking it, that's it. So in the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you my very simple yet incredibly powerful rating system that I use to quickly cull and organize hundreds of images. And once you learn it, you're gonna absolutely love culling your photos. Okay, so before we get started, you should know that the entire process I'm about to show you, it's all outlined step-by-step -step in a free PDF guide that I've created. I call it a Lightroom Workflow Cheat Sheet, and I'll put a link where you can go and download your copy, but it's basically a bird's eye view of my entire Lightroom workflow. The exact process I go through whenever I come home with a card full of images that I just can't wait to process. I go over importing, organizing, processing, and exporting. So if you're short on time or you just want that quick reference, go and download it. I guarantee that you're gonna find something in there that you didn't know before. All right, so let's jump over to the desktop here so we can take a look at my culling and rating workflow. Okay, so here in the library module, I have a collection of images that I wanna put into a hierarchy from my absolute favorites down to the so-so images that I'm, I'm not really thrilled about but I want to keep around just in case I change my mind later on. So the first thing you should do before you even get to this stage here is to make sure that you've removed any image that you absolutely don't want in the catalog. So those are blurry frames, misfires, duplicates, or just images you have no desire in processing. So this is how I decide on those. If I'm even asking the question of whether or not I want to keep them in my catalog, I remove them right off the bat. Now, don't be afraid to be very liberal with your calling process because when you remove an image from the catalog here, you're not deleting that photo permanently from your hard drive. That source file is not going to be deleted. That raw file you copied over from the memory card. All you're doing here is removing the connection, the reference or the preview of that image from the catalog file to keep things tidy and organized. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about here or you otherwise have questions about how the catalog file and previews actually work, under the hood, make sure to go and download that Lightroom cheat sheet because inside of that I have a link to a free Lightroom course which explains all this in great detail. You'll learn so much about how Lightroom works and I guarantee it'll clear up many questions that you may have and just make Lightroom a lot easier to use. All right, so here we are with all the images that we want to keep in the catalog and we want to rate them from your absolute favorites that you want to process right now down to your maybes someday later on. Now, most photographers make a big mistake here. And what they'll do is that they'll look at one image. Let's zoom in a little bit with my grid view. So they'll look at one image here and they'll try to decide if this is a one, two, three, four, or five star image. So let's say I want to give this a four star. It's not my absolute favorite, but it's pretty high up there. So then I move on to the next one and I ask myself the same five questions. This is a one, two, three, four, five star image. Let's give this a three star, let's give this one a four, this one a two, this one a five, and just keep going. Now the problem with this process is that it's very difficult to rate multiple images based on how much you like them, which is entirely subjective to you and also your mood that day. You may have a completely different opinion on these images a few days later. So it's a very unstable system when you're rating on likability. And it's also difficult because you are trying to rate them based on comparison, meaning that you're comparing them to all the other images you're currently rating. So you cannot accurately compare a single image against dozens or even hundreds of other images you haven't even seen yet based on something as subjective as how much you like it. Because the further you get along in the process, the more inaccurate your ratings will be. For example, let's scroll down a little bit here. And let's say I come across this image here, which is an absolute instant favorite. I wanna bump this to the front of the line and process it right now. So I'm definitely gonna give this a five star. But what do I do with the images that I've already rated a five star, but I don't like as much as this image yet? Do I go back and take this image here and downgrade it to a four? And what does that mean for my existing four star images up here? 
Do I have to also go back and change this one to a three star? So this is where photographers get tripped up and stop rating altogether because it is so inconsistent. However, there is a much smarter and more consistent way to do this, and that is by rating your images in cycles. So let me show you what I mean by that. First step is to select all your images here in the grid view and rate them with one star. So this is your ground level. All of the images you're currently looking at are gonna be one star or above. Next, go to your first image, this one right here, and ask yourself, is this image a favorite amongst the current group? So in other words, you're asking whether or not this is a standout image. And if it is, well, first you wanna deselect all your images, make sure you only have that one image selected, give it a two star rating, and then move on to the next one. And if that's a favorite as well, give that a two star and keep going until you've gone through all of your images here. And if you're using your keyboard, this process goes extremely fast. So keep going and once you're done, you're probably gonna have a good amount of two star images here, probably two thirds or more of the images you're currently rating. That's actually just what you want because we're going to further reduce this number. Now, the next step is where all this will make sense and you can see the power of this workflow of rating in cycles. In the library module, go up to your filters here, go to attribute and filter your images by two star ratings. So all the one star images have now been hidden and you're just looking at those images you rated with a two star. And now we're gonna repeat the same exact steps with your two star images. Go back up to the first image and then ask yourself, is this still a favorite amongst the current group? without the one star images in view. We're excluding them now from our evaluation. And if it still is, upgrade your rating to three stars and then move on to the next one. So at the end, you now have a hierarchy going. You have one, two, and three star images. Now those one stars are still hidden from your view, but if you take the rating attribute off, they come right back. So this is why it's so powerful. Here's a big point here. Instead of trying to figure out whether one image is a one, two, three, four, five star, you're now asking yourself a simple yes or no question. Is this image a standout favorite amongst the current group? So not only are you able to get that answer more quickly, you're looking at an image, asking yourself yes or no, and then moving right along, but you can come back and change your rating more easily if as you continue on, you see that, you know what? This isn't a three star image after all. I'm gonna change this back to a two star image. And you can see where this is going. Once you finish with your three stars here, you then change your library filter so that you're only looking at three stars or above. And repeat the same process for rating them four and five stars. So at the end, you take all the filters off and you now have a perfectly rated collection that is balanced, accurate, and very simple to execute. So even though this may seem like it's more work because you're going through multiple rounds of rating the same images, and some of them you're gonna go over four times, but actually this saves you a ton of time because you're not hemming and hawing over whether a single image is one, two, three, four, or five stars. So this goes super quick. And not only that, but this process eliminates uncertainty because you don't have to go back and re-rate multiple images if the criteria for a certain star rating changes as you progress. Because as I mentioned earlier, when you get toward the end of your images, what originally made a five star image might now be a four star. So you need to go back and re-rate all those five stars. So not only is this faster, but it's much more accurate and consistent. All right, I hope you found this helpful. And remember, this entire workflow is outlined in that free Lightroom cheat sheet I mentioned earlier. And I've detailed every step of my processing workflow in this. Everything I do from import to export is outlined from a bird's eye view. So you can see how the entire process works. So while you're here, just click the link and you can download your free copy right now. And actually just updated it and everyone said that they found it extremely helpful. All right, I hope you found these tips useful. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.